Okay, so in this windy condition, this next one we've got is uh, a quince. And this was donated to me by uh, Dawn Isaac, who uh, does all my uh, ceramics. She uh, had a few of these. I think she said it was from cuttings or something. I'm not sure. You may well have seen the repot on this, actually. It went in this pot this year, but got a lovely flush of growth. Feels solid. Um, the rocks are there because Nigel likes to use rocks, and everyone wants to be like Nigel. <laughs> anyway, um, I was going to say, I've got a few things I'm going to do with this. But the first one is, um, this I cut last year um, and uh, what you can again see hopefully is this collar and you can see it's a clear differentiation um, which is basically a protection that the tree has formed so that nothing beyond there will die back with my 900 foot Japanese bonsai saw I'm going to carefully cut now what you do with it is you make sure you keep your cut within the boundaries of that collar um, I can always go slightly tight and I'll clean up later. I'm doing this live, I've never cut anything live, well, apart from my finger. So, let's see how this goes. Um, here we go. Now, the problem you will see is that I'm doing my best to hold it secure, but while I'm doing this operation, there is movement within the roots. Probably cut through quicker if it was sharper. What we want to do is get a really clean cut. Hopefully take the top portion of my thumb off at the same time. What I want to do now is we've got a little bit, fairly, fairly straight edge, um, all within inside the collar. But what I do want to do is just clean that edge. And what you're trying to do is get a nice, nice straight edge of cambium so that when you put the cut paste on it you're going to get a much, much better um, callousing over. So that's the sort of size where I'd definitely put a double of this on. Oh, that's the size. That's quince sap I think. Okay, so. Honestly, do not do what I'm doing. Um, I don't know, someone, I definitely think some of the cut paste are carcinogenic. <laughs> Can't believe I'm saying that. Okay, so that's actually a much better example of using cut paste. Here's an example up here. We've got a nice big cut there. Um, just to stop infections coming in, this stuff. A little bit messy, I know. Should be standing up probably do this and just cover the site. The first thing is really really obvious is this branch here is very very straight so in terms of taper I'm not going to want it. Um, here if you look I've actually got a nice, well, it's not so much there, but nice movement and then it's coming down to smaller branches here so if I've got that one there or this one here um, with one of these, either this one or the one at the back being kept for as a side branch or a rear, uh, as a back branch. So that's got moving. I'm going to take that branch off. Um, and again, being aware, there's a big knuckle area here. So be safe. Nice clean cut. Is wiping on the side of the table. In terms of the size of the tree, um, I mean there isn't a lot of taper difference here which is a shame. Um, that's quite a straight verticality there. So I'm limited already by the fact I've already got this here but it's, it's equal to this proportion to this. So if I bring that as a branch um, that would be fine. So what I want is the best movement here which means I've got to decide whether I want this branch at the back or this one at the back. So I'm deciding which of these two because it's, the reason I'm saying that is because I've actually got three from the same point. So one of these is going and it's going to be the one that's uh, going to be the best for the back of the tree. OK, 
countries I'm looking at. There's a, there's a really obvious one here. This one goes along a little bit of movement and then immediately bifurcates into two. Um, that's ideal for future development. Um, spreads out and I get classic side. On this one, you've got this long straight with straight, but it doesn't bifurcate into anything at all until you're out here. So either I'll have to be developing something here. So that makes it easy for me. Go into the wood. Um, just clean up. Clean up the edge. Oh, now, okay, I've done it, so I'll show you the damage. Right, by not being careful, what I've actually done is taken that whole layer of um, bark off. I mean, there's nothing I can do about that apart from very carefully remove it. I could promote further dieback here, um, and the reason why this happens is because this razor blade is actually blunt. Um, so I'm sure Darren from Grow Bonsai um, is um, putting his hands in his head at the moment if he's uh, actually got time to watch this. I, I think um, Darren was one of the. Um, did he start his channel three, four years ago, Grow Bonsai? Um, and I remember seeing him in his, his early ones and uh, I think he did it from his um, conservatory um, and he was did some lovely stuff on um, shop bought um, Chinese elms and really really good because I remember joking and saying I'd do the same myself but there's too many good people already doing it and I didn't have a camera so so that's that done but yeah you've got to be careful when you're doing these cuts um, you do not want to be doing any splits or causing any further damage to the wood than you're already doing it stresses the tree okay so that's that so now we've decided that this is the front um, there's a lot of nothing here so if you looked at it it's almost quite two-dimensional so uh, that could end up being turned a bit of wiring on here it's quite a um, it's quite a rigid tree the quince the other thing is it's unusual um, this this here it's quite a lumpy if you look at the size of that versus the size there it's almost bigger up here um, and this is where you know you, you deal with what you've actually got interesting shape but I'm not I'm not sure whether I'm not sure how that's going to work out that may get um, may get removed to be honest but not necessary today because I haven't decided so if you imagine without that you've got this branch here then you've got this one going out there you've got this one here I want to grow which will take that that way and then we're moving up here and potentially it's quite a straight length there removing this in fact I'm gonna do that now I'm gonna remove that so with that in mind the growth I really want is from here. This is the one I want to go up. This branch actually gets bigger. Mmm. If you look at that, it's a great big knuckle here. I was going to take a leaf out of Tony's book. Mind you, I like what's going on up here. What, what can go on up here, especially with some wire. Um, so I'm not ready to make that decision. It's all right to not know, by the way. So what I'm actually going to do, because I don't know, so I know I don't want to. I want growth to go upwards right now. So I'm going to bring these back to and halve the leaf size. Uh, this one. Probably want a wire actually. Put some wire on that. All you do is you fold the leaf down along the line. Um, and you can see the line that you want to cut parallel to that edge. Wherever you are, the sharper you do it, the more leaf-like it looks. I'm going to put a bit of wire on that and a bit of wire on that. 
wiring trees. Um, I, I mean, I'm not going to lie, I didn't wire anything for the first 10 years. Um, and then uh, I, uh, I realised that I couldn't take uh, my trees any further in terms of development in the way I wanted to. And, I, and I, by then I'd started um, watching uh, Bonsai Mirai and he did such an excellent excellent tutorial on um, wiring that I um, I realised I had to um, move up a step and, and increase my skills. Um, it's a bit like whether you get onto things like raffia and stuff like that. Um, there's a point where if you want to achieve certain stuff with your trees you need, you need to step up I think. And that's not to say that excellent, excellent um, bonsaiers like um, Nigel, um, the bonsai zone are wrong in not. I, mean, I know he's used one occasionally. He does a fantastic stuff to just clip and grow uh, and directional pruning. Um, but I found that uh, my whole bonsai journey opened up once I started to take a chance with wiring and learn the skills um, and you know it hasn't all gone brilliantly but it's worth it um, and the first lesson I learned and although it's costly is that I tried I tried really to hold on to to reuse wire and there's a couple of um, older youtubers who show you how you can um, use pliers to pull the wire straight again and if you can do that brilliant um, I just think it's hard enough to wire a tree with um, fresh wire um, than, than trying to, to, to sort of start trying to wire a tree with something that's already got hard bends and like that. Because the end result is the, the, the more used and convoluted the wire is, one, if it's a copper wire or anything like that, it will have already hardened anyway, so you're going to struggle to get any give in the, in the wire. But you're trying to protect the bark, um, and you're trying to get all of the wire to have a firm hold on the on the branch to allow you to do the move, affect the movement you want. So for me, it was definitely the right thing to do. So my coils are going what's that, clockwise, which means follow the direction I was wiring that way. So that's the way I want to rotate and bend. And that was the next thing I learned about wiring was that rather than just bending this way that way, you actually rotate in the direction you want to go. So the wire's coiling that way, so I'm going to rotate the branch. And that will then bring that one parallel. I'm also trying to bring some to the front. I'll have a look. I've got buds there and there. Um, so rotate and down. And then up. And it's just gentle, subtle movement, but it's using the wire. By, by bending the direction of the wire, you keep all the coils, they tighten slightly. Um, but you also don't get that big um, saggy knee thing, where there's suddenly a great big gap, because you've actually bent in the wrong way. And in fact, I can show you what I mean, because on this one here, that wire there was originally tight against that branch, but because I've actually gone in the wrong direction with my bending technique, I've opened up a hole, so there's a being exerted no force at that point. Um, and that's because I decided to lift it a bit. Always support as best you can where the wire is, and watching and listening and watching out for potential breaks. Yeah, that's fine, so that's a bit of movement. Um, and then on the back here, all I really want to do is just give it a little bit of a, a dip. And that's it for now. Uh, I'm not going to do anything more. I can't decide what's going on here and I can't decide what's going on here yet. Um, I can see a time when that one there will go. Perhaps that will go out further. Anyway, so from the quince, that's all I'm doing. A um, little bit of wiring technique. It's worth taking the time. Um, even coils. So there, so that's the quince.